work of the Regional Economic Commission on MIPS. Our second speaker is Ms. Nurgul Zanaiva, representative of Forum of Women's NGOs, Kyrgyzstan. Based on your experience, Ms. Nurgul, what are some examples of effective development strategies to address middle-income countries, sustainable development barriers, particularly in, our, in relation with women and girls? Thank you very much for this opportunity. La dear ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, dear participants of the session. It, finances are important part. And we hear a lot about finances. They are challenging. But a part of financing, there are other challenges, and there are some strategies that can help to address these challenges and speed up progress towards uh, from middle-income countries to high-income countries. I refer to the fact the Sustainable Development Framework is providing opportunities that could still could and still can assist in addressing high, hard challenges. First of all, policy coherence approach. If we look at the VNR reports from the middle income countries, we see that very few countries are reporting on policy coherence. And this is extremely important. If you look at high income countries, it is there and it is quite high. Second, human rights based approach. We can't go to high-income countries without ensuring that human rights are protected and advanced and proper mechanism. The other strategies that can be very effective and works very well for against poverty and for women's rights also, it's development effectiveness approach. Applied, this principle can lead us to, hel to help to come to the target, leave no one behind. Using, I would like to tell a few words about development effectiveness approach. Using development effectiveness approach is the best way to speed up progress, unite efforts, and leave no one behind. There is an existing mechanism, and we can use that. Four principles of development effectiveness, development effectiveness are quite important. Inclusive partnership, country ownership, transparency accountability, and results orientation. So development effectiveness approach is the best way to speed up our progress, unite us. The second approach, or this is the second strategy, I think it's an important strategy to integrate specific cross-cutting and common approaches. For example, it was commitment from 2015 to mainstream and to integrate into all goals women's rights and gender equality. All regions, especially middle-income countries, are not reporting quite high on these commitments, but there is a capacity and potential. It is important to mention that for making policy coherent, it is not enough to connect various causal relations, but it is quite necessary to connect actors Besides the multidimensional nature of policy goals, it is needed to address also multi-stakeholder roles with equal but differentiated responsibilities. Multi-stakeholder partnership. If you ask anyone from the government or the diverse communities, we would say there is a multi-stakeholder partnership. But I think we are talking about elements of the bicycle, but the bicycle is not running. Everyone tells, there is a chain, there is a wheel, but why bicycle is not running? Almost all goals emphasize the, the role of level coordination of different development actors, but there is no relevant strategy to address this issue. Maybe for middle-income countries, it is time to think and focus our attention to precisely address this issue of low level of coordination. If you look to VNR reports, lack of coordination is highlighted in many, many, by many countries. We introduce multi-stakeholder partnership at all levels. One of the serious segments to make it truly multi-stakeholder, 
to ensure institutionalized participation of civil society organizations. They are the voices of most vulnerable, those who need to come out of poverty and to live in a high income countries. It is important to link political commitments with budgetary reforms. It is important to link SDGs and human rights. Regarding to the women's rights and gender equality, I would like to say that SDG is providing a lot of opportunities to make lives of women and girls much more better, sustainable. I would like call attention of middle-income countries, governments, communities, to address the target 5C1. And I see that the time is over uh, to finalize target 5C1 is precisely on financing. I started talking about that financing is not important or is important as other internal issues. But for women's rights, we do have a lot of political commitment. Financing, we cannot track funds allocation and we are not allocating enough money to make women go out of the poverty and live in a better circumstances. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Morgul.